and welcome to the channel. Where are my Mustang guys? We're talking about 5 liter Mustangs versus 4.62 valve Mustangs and not 5 liter Coyote multi-cam stuff. I like the Coyotes too. We're talking about the 5 liter EFI, the one that started the Mustang industry. Okay, maybe it didn't start the Mustang industry. Stuff was going on before that, but you know what I'm talking about. Fox chassis, 5 liter EFI versus 4.62 valve EFI. Which one makes more power stock? Which one makes more power modified? Which one makes more power under boost? Or do they both do the same thing? In this video, we're gonna compare a 5 liter 302 Ford Mustang engine to a 462 valve Mustang engine. We're gonna compare them stock, we're gonna compare them modified, and we're gonna compare them both with centrifugal superchargers. Before you start making your comments about apples to apples, please know this, there's no way for us to run them with the same cylinder heads because one of them is an overhead cam motor. There's no way to run it with the same camshaft because one of them's an overhead cam motor. We can't run them with the same intake because one of them's an overhead cam motor. We could, however, run them both with the same supercharger. So maybe there's apples there after all. To get things started on a comparison between the EFI 5 liter Ford and the motor that succeeded it, the 4.6 liter two valve Ford motor, we're gonna take a look first at the 5 liter, the original. And this was a stock motor that I ran, basically a wrecking yard deal long tube headers. We had a good management system on it. We didn't run the factory EFI. We ran a Holly HP management system, hooker engine five eighths and long tube headers, open throttle body, no accessories. You know, this is kind of an optimized version, which is why it's making more than the rated 225 horsepower that the factory tells you that they make, but run in this condition. Let's see. Yeah, everything was stock on this. We also had 36 pound injectors, not because the injectors will make more power on the stock version, but because we needed the larger injector to flow the amount of fuel once we made our modifications to it. <clears throat> so running stock Aww. trim, our five liter Ford produced 260.5 horsepower. So we'll call that 261 horsepower and 321 foot pounds torque. And here's what happened after we added a, now you could obviously do any number of different modifications to this, but we added a whole trick flow, basically a top end combination, because that's kind of what you're going to want to do to a five liter Ford. A every component of the five liter Ford is limiting. So if you just do cylinder heads, they'll be worth a little bit. If you just do a camshaft, it'll be worth a little bit. If you just do an intake, it'll be worth a little bit. But the problem is that if you only do one of those, the other two things are gonna be holding it back. So we basically replaced everything. Aww. And here's what happened when we did a heads cam and intake on the five liter Ford. You can see we picked up a lot of power. The We, we put a set of trick flow 11R heads and they were 171 11R heads. Yeah, so they were CNC ported. We also put the stage two cam in, which is a very similar to the Extreme Energy 274 cam that I use a lot on these five liters. It was a uh, 224, 232 degree duration at 50. So it's a healthy cam. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here so you guys can see it. It had a, a TFS track heat intake manifold, the 75 millimeter throttle body. We retained the headers. And this also had uh, a set of uh, 1.6 roller rockers on it. So this thing made 391 horsepower, 390.9. We had uh, an interesting little kind of dual torque peak here though, although it made peak torque of 372 foot pounds down here at 4,200, it was still 371 foot pounds out at 5,000. So it's kind of a nice little combination with the fuel injected deal. Now, what's gonna happen if you put a heads cam and intake manifold on there? It's gonna make anywhere between 350 to 400 and maybe a little more than that depending on which combination you select. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and show you real quick. Here's what happened when we replaced the long runner EFI intake with basically a dual plane carbureted intake. In this case, it was an RPM air gap and a 750 Holley on it. It made 402 horsepower. Torque was every, very similar to the long runner, a little bit less than the peak. And then if you want even more peak power, you obviously can go to a single plane which is, this was a funnel web, and then peak power went all the way up to 415 horsepower. But take a look, you lose a lot, basically below 5,500 RPM. The single plane is kind of a not a great choice for this 302. But if you want lots of big peak power and you want to keep revenant out there, obviously that's one way to go. But now let's take a look and see what happened when we combine the fuel injected motor um, or, or our modified 302 with a little bit of boost and kind of see where we go from there. 
But first, here's a recap of our naturally aspirated mods on the 5 liter. Just like with the number of NA, possible NA combinations that you can do on your 302, the modifications you can perform, there are obviously a lot of different combinations of boosts that you can apply. I'm just going to show you one and kind of give you an idea, which is fairly typical of uh, what you might do to a 302 or a modified 302. So this was our uh, EFI version with the heads cam and intake from TrickFlow. It was basically a stock bottom end with uh, the TrickFlow Stage 2 camshaft, the TFS 170 11R CNC ported heads, and the um, TrickFlow Long Runner EFI intake manifold. And to that, we added a Torque Storm supercharger. You can take a look and see what the results are here. So that pushed our peak power up to 638 horsepower and 545 foot pounds and this the same thing you could get with uh, you know the right size pro charger vortec you could and a turbo obviously would give you a different power curve you could put a kenny bell on i mean there that's the great thing about the five liter is there's like almost an infinite number of different possibilities that you could apply to this combination and make very good power so this is a real good indication the torques are worked very well i liked it because it was easy to bolt on it we didn't have to drill a hole in the pan or anything and that Torque Storm supercharger is not going to be a thousand horsepower blower. This is right in kind of the sweet spot because it's a 700 to maybe 750 horsepower blower if you really spun it up. And this combination worked very well. You can see this is good power. I ran a Vortec on my personal 5 liter 302 for a long time, 85,000 miles, and it worked great. So this is this is going to be a really fun combination. This had an 8-inch crank pulley and a 3.25-inch blower pulley. Good combination. So now let's take a look and see what, what happens when we make similar modifications to a 4.6-liter 2-valve. Now here's a recap of the power gains offered by the Torque Storm Supercharger. After taking a look at what happened with our original 5-liter EFI 302, now we can take a look at the motor that replaced it, and that's the 462 valve. That's the one that they used in a variety of different applications for a really extended period of time. It actually had a very long run. In the Mustang, it was fairly short, but we're going to take a look at this particular motor was a 1998. It was a non-PI version. The PI version would obviously make more power starting out, and maybe people, the modular guys, are going to complain about that, but ideally... When I'm putting a motor together on a two valve, I like to start out with a non-PI short block and then add PI heads, which is exactly what we did here. And that turns out to be a better combination. Even though you're starting out with not quite as much power, you end up with much more because a combination of the non-PI short block and the PI head um, creates a combination that has higher static compression and it ends up making more power. So we ran this 462 valve, this 1998, in the same condition that we ran the 5 liter Ford in, meaning that it had no accessories, it had electric water pump, it had inch and 5 eighths long tube headers, it had an open throttle body, and we ran it with a fast management system, so we optimized the tune on it. So run in this manner, this combination produced uh, power numbers that were, that were fairly close to what the 5 liter did, and not surprisingly so since it was rated at 225 horsepower by the factory, but it produced 266 horsepower, and torque was uh, at 343 foot-pounds of torque. So here's what happened when we did our modifications the, in, in a similar fashion that we did on the 5-liter Ford. You can see peak power, like with the 5-liter, peak power was up dramatically. We lost maybe a touch down low because we put some fairly good-sized camshafts in this thing. Take a look at our description here, but the peak power was 393 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 383 foot-pounds of torque. And to this combination, we added the Extreme Energy 274 cams, the non-PI cams, so they were the lower lift cams. They were the 500 lift versus the 550 lift. We added a set of Total Engine Airflow CNC-ported PI heads to our non-PI short block and a PI intake manifold. This one was run with the stock throttle body and elbow, which actually restricted power a little bit and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here's what happened when we added an AccuFab throttle body and elbow on this thing. See the power picked up. We were actually up over 400 horsepower, 405 horsepower. Peak torque was 394 foot-pounds. So again, you know, you could do a little bit more induction work. The PI manifold actually works fairly good. It's a good combination 
of both power and torque production. You can see this thing, even though it was 4.6 liters, it, it had really, really good torque production. So in modified form, our 4.6 liter two valve actually made a bit more power than our four valve did. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we added boost to this. And just like with the four, the five liter, we added a number of different versions of boost to our 4.6 valve. We ran this thing with a Vortec and a Kenny Bell and turbos and all kinds of stuff. So let's take a look at what happens when we added some boost. Here's a recap of the power gains on the naturally aspirated 4.6 liter two valve. So just like with the 302, I'm going to show you what happens when we added boost to our 4.6 liter 2 valve and we kind of get a comparison. But the reality is that both of them respond very well to boost. And when you're starting out near 400 horsepower, you're going to get similar gains from both of them. And so this was our combination with the AccuFab throttle body, the PI intake manifold, total engine airflow ported uh, stage 2 ported PI heads, the stock short block and the Extreme Energy 274 cams. We, you know, when, when we were in a, we're making 405 horsepower and four, 393 foot pounds. Here's what happened when we added a Vortex supercharger. And we'll take a look here. It was run with a 3.33 uh, inch blower pulley, the stock crank pulley. It was also run with an after cooler, whereas the Torque Storm that we ran on the 302 did not have any sort of intercooling on that combination. Um, but the thing is, and I know guys are going to want to compare this and see which one makes more, but the reality is they'll both make similar power because they both started out making similar power. The Vortec ultimately could make more power than the Torque Storm because it was a basically a bigger blower. Um, probably the reason that the two valve here didn't make quite as much as the um, 302, it made 623 or 24 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 545, 546 foot pounds of torque. So it did very well. It had slightly more boost, about 11 and a half pounds compared to 10 pounds with the torque storm combination on the 302. But a couple things happened here. One, we ran less timing on this 462 valve as I look back through the data. And also it was equipped with the after cooler. And while that would improve the charge cooling, you know, it would reduce the inlet air temperature. It also, that size core is starting to get fairly restrictive at this 600 plus horsepower power level. We know that from additional testing that I did on a 351. When we replaced that core with a bigger intercooler, we definitely picked up power. But the important part of this is both the 5 liter and the 462 valve, you can get obviously a ton of extra power with them with the typical kind of heads cam and intake deal. And then they respond very well to boost. Just depends on how much power you want, how much boost you're going to supply and what you're going to do it with, whether in this case it's a Vortec or a Torque Storm, you know, a Kenny Bell, a Paxton, a Procharger, or even a couple of turbos. Let's get to our conclusion. Here's a recap of the power gains offered by the Vortec Supercharger. Okay, guys, what do we learn in this comparison between the 5-liter Ford and the 462 valve? Is there a clear winner? Here's what I want you to remember. From all of these testing, both of these motors work very well. In fact, we can look even beyond this comparison. Because one thing I know from having done this for years and years and years in the magazines and been doing these videos now on YouTube, I'm probably over 600 videos. And one thing you can be sure of as I'm going to get the comment is, this wasn't an apples to apples comparison. There are guys that actually want this to be a direct comparison. I need to know for absolute certainty that the 5 liter is better than the 4.6 because the 5 liter guy wants to know that. And he wants reaffirmation that he made the right choice. And the same thing for the 4.6.2 valve. But here's what I want you to understand. We took two motors. Doesn't matter that one was a 5 liter, one was a 4.6. We took two motors, both making about 260-ish horsepower. We did modifications to them, brought them up a little over 400 horsepower, then added boost to them and brought both of those up over 600 horsepower. And here's the important thing. It really doesn't matter what motor we're starting with. This doesn't just apply to a comparison between the 5 liter and the 4.6.2 valve. It actually applies to a comparison with any motor. We could have run a Cadillac, an LS, a Boss 302, an inline six cylinder, a four cylinder Honda, it doesn't matter. We're going to start out at some point with our NA deal. It's going to go up to here once it's modified and then it's going to go way up to here once we add boost. And 
every motor does that. So the what you should get from all of this is whether you have a five liter Ford or a 462 valve or any other motor, is that good things happen when we add boost, especially when we add it to something that's modified. Armature Holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing coming up.